Hey, you doing all right? Eric Durench here. Take 66. I keep redoing this video, trying to make it shorter, and it keeps getting longer. So we're gonna try a different approach. Everything about international engines. They were designed in 56, but from 59 till 86, they were in production. Okay, you wanna know why they are the best, the most powerful, the biggest big block ever made? Ah, uh, you wanna bet? They outweigh a 454 production big block ever made, okay? Now, what makes them special? Highest nickel content ever, biggest big block ever, and they have a lot of things that aren't for comfort, okay? They basically fire like a Chevy, but they have a backwards spinning camshaft because it's a direct drive gear. A little noisy, less parasitic loss. Time it off number eight. We have centered pistons. They, for noise, off-center them. They already come good to go, okay? You can't flip them around no matter what. There's a special relief. We'll get into the weird cylinder head designs later. They're amazing flow. These things were designed to go for a long time, no engineered obsolescence in our farm trucks. Now, before we get into the interchangeability, how all six of these engines are exactly the same almost, and almost every part is interchangeable from almost any engine, for that long period of time, yes, I wanna show you, besides for the domed and the non-domed, which we'll get into, I'm gonna show you amazing things about why these dominated the Baja, that's right, Beat the CJ by 17 hours, the Bronco by 21 hours, Duster, Blazer, failed. They beat everyone by two hours in the class above with all the modified buggies, okay? Not the super modified, but they beat everyone by two hours in the modified. So, how'd they do it with these engines? All what I just showed you is why they, why they okay? why they make the power, but what you need to understand about the power is we were talking about comparing them in weight and size to a 454. Well, 454 truck engine of the era, we're gonna have to see here, okay, is gonna happen to have a little more horsepower and a little more torque. So this 454, let's see, the horsepower is gonna peak at 272, right? But you see how it is, it comes to a peak across the RPM band. Horsepower, RPM. So our net horsepower is lower because we come in this peak as we creep up to, to near 300 horsepower, 272, at a little past 4K. And then taper off and flutter off as I drew it all crazy because production engines aren't made to go past 5.5 with the exception of those Clevelands. But moving forward, the International, as soon as you hit the gas, 700 RPM, that means you tow the pedal, 1200 RPM, you're at full power, and you stay there all the way up to four or 44, or a lot more if you've done what I'm about to show you and the trick to winning the Baja. So that's why they rate them at four or 4.4 4 red line as opposed to 5.5. 5. So 235 torque, 356, 356 torque, 235 power as opposed to 390 and 272. But again, all torque and power are full just off of idle, okay? It's the same with the 345 and almost the same with the higher revving 304 and 266. Now let's discuss those, because this is the fun part. You understand how it's a different type of power. You have to be faster and more, what would the, what would the, uh, like the difference of a, of, a, of a slow steer and a fast steer, you've got to be able to control the fast steer like it's a slow steer. Oh my gosh, I sound goofy already. 
Now I match my hair. Look, this just started. This is going to look good in a month. So anyway, I'm going to break this down to you and show you how it's all interchangeable and show you the couple things that aren't in the rebuild video that you'll need to know. Well, there are a little extra tips and they'll help. And um, I proved it. I'll show you how, and I'm gonna show you all the different parts and the things that make it special. Again, you already learned about the reverse timing. That's how a lot of people screw them up. And, um, you know, you could, so we understand what made him special. Now, that higher net power allows us to not spin the wheels and go the whole time. If you can put it down. Now, We've got, I'm gonna break it down to three engines. There is a 304. There's also a 266, but all it is is a 304, smaller pistons and slightly smaller intake valve. That's it. That's it. Same exact motor. Then we have a 345. Same exact motor as the 304. Same pistons, same connecting rods, okay? Different crankshaft, different push rods. Everything else is almost exactly the same. See, it's decked, okay? A 345 has a bigger stroke. 392 is a 345 with bigger pistons and a little bit bigger intake valve. That's it. 304 and 345, same intake valves. They all got the same exhaust valves. They're all semi-hemis. That's why they have the weird shapes and the weird swirl leaves. Now, let me tell you what you need to know and what's special about all these engines, okay? Because that's weird around here. So the issue you're experiencing is gonna be a lot of lifter pump up, not valve float the, due to springs, it's due to lifter pump up. These are the same springs as the Ford Power Stroke 7.3 diesel it's an international diesel, the 4444. It's an international motor. And it shares the same. They all got these springs as well, okay? Now, you get a little lifter pump up because of these, these engines were not meant to sit at the angle they sit in these trucks. So the oil sloshes to the back, and it's already barely doing anything in the front drains as it is on the heads. So all of the oil gets pumped up to the top and stays there. That's the problem when you try to go have fun with these. So in the video you see by polishing it up, for five years that thing dominated, not an issue. Flew all day, even cross country at 80 miles an hour, not a problem. Could still pass with the extra court, let it drain back down, okay? Scouts have a rear sump pan, not like the trucks with the front sump pan. So other than that little issue, but how did they win the Baja like that? Well, they just tapped a hole in the side of the head near the oil drain and ran a hose down to the oil pan. That's all they had to do. Then they could just keep their foot on it the entire time. Yep. So, lower RPM with the same power means the tires aren't spinning. Beautiful. Now that we understand what we got, you know, we, we also need to understand before we go into the heads that these parts, okay, you could get headers, intake manifolds, aluminums, um, you could get any type of cam stage, dual point distributors, everything you could think is available. They don't need to be four bolt main because there's such huge blocks, okay? 
They are... Wow! Almost as indestructible as this phone. So... I'm lucky. So... I guess we'll run over all the boring numbers and everything now. Um, obviously, they didn't bore out a 345 into a 392. It's different. You would you would go into the water jackets. They're different castings. They they don't they don't lob off the heads and waste machining time. A 304 is a different casting than a 345 as well. These block the blocks are different castings. Okay. All right, so that being said, the heads, even though they're the same, obviously there's different combustion chamber castings and we're gonna get into the different ones now. So everything else is regular, semi-hemi. Um, they do have a weird, because of that, exhaust fell being cantered, they wind up. See how they leave that little edge there? And one here for the intakes. So the intake a little bit and the exhaust a lot. Well, that's open on the heads. Okay. That's because it's a semi-hemi and the exhaust valve has to go somewhere. So that's why it has the weird shaped pistons, obviously not these flat tops here. But when we're talking about those, those are different. I'll show you the, I'll show you the reason why that. This is a flat topped and that's a dome topped of the same piston, 4.125. Um, more 3.656 stroke. 3.656 stroke on a 345 with a 3.875 bore, same as the 304 with the 3.219 stroke. Again, other than that, everything's the same. Oh, well, obviously with that being decked, the manifolds are different. They won't fit, the V's different. And see that big rectangle port that is like two and an eighth by two and uh, one and three eighths. Here is um, square ports. So they're not they're not the same. Um, again, castings. They didn't different casting. Look at all that space. No space. So you could get a square bore. Holly for any of these, four barrel, or a two barrel for any of these. You could get a thermal quad, square bore, spread bore, but not for the little guys. But, and the aluminum isn't available for the little guys either, but you get headers, cams, everything is available. Anything you could think of to do to these. So, did I tell you about the 196 and the 152? I think I did. There's the manifold for that. Did I tell you it was a, de uh, 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 they lobbed four cylinders off of a 190, uh, 392 and made a 196 after they killed the 266 and 68 and the 152 and 68, which was four cylinders lobbed off a of 345. A big block, slant four. Half the horsepower of a 345, that 196, but almost the same torque. There you go. And people, you could hog that out and put a Weber, a two-stage Weber that works like a four barrel with a bigger and a smaller barrel. Moving forward. So what we haven't gotten to yet is the heads. We got regular cams. Um, flat tap it, you know, then we'll talk one trick about that, but it's already in the video, so we'll leave it to the end. <clears throat> um, 
Pre-70 heads are not hardened valve seats. There's a good chance they're sunk in there from running with unleaded gas. They do make substitutes. I don't know if they work. Hardened valve seats were 70 and above. Now they made the non-E heads, the emission heads and the A heads for California before then. So we have the option of having, here is a 345 E head from 71. Okay. Here is a dome piston head from the 60s. Late 60s, because it still has that stupid crossover port in the exhaust. Um, the very first emissions. It wasn't the piece. The PVC valve was an excuse to make the emission control. Blah, 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 blah. It's in the other video. But it wasn't actually an emissions device. So it's not. It's for underwater use and tanks. So the dome piston, and you can see the valve cut out and the, they all have the same exhaust 2.078 on the um on the 392s 1969 on 345s and 304s and they're a little smaller on the on the you know the 266 um so these e heads even though they have hardened valves these are the style of the old ones the same for these 304 heads, the same same style. Okay, see how they have different chambers? See, these are, but this one has a different chamber because this is a newer style head. They had more open chambers, slightly less compression. Um, there's something about emissions it did though. Um, I I can't can't think of what it was, all right? So here's a 392 and a 392 dome. But you could also have 392 like this. Okay? Okay. So these are the sought after ones. All right. And yeah. So this is also improved cooling. So on the on the 190s to on the 392s, the later on um in the 70s, the later 70s, they were um having an issue with, cause they started putting them in the big trucks. Again, emissions made the 392 like it was a 304. And they started putting them in the, in the, in the smaller trucks. So in the smaller space, they were getting hotter. So they had to, if you see, these two holes are on every head, except for the improved cooling. This says 392, but it's actually off of a 196. So, that was a big block slant 392, four cylinders cut off. That replaced the 152, four cylinders cut off of a, of a, of a big of a 345. And um, yeah, so they stopped making 266s and 152s in like after 68 because emissions. <clears throat> um, what did I miss? What did I miss? What did I miss? So. 4.125, yeah, we, we talked about that. Um, 440 lift and 395 lift and take exhaust and all of them, everything's all the same. You know, was, there was also the, um, the stamped spoon type or whatever later on. Um, the, the later heads that do have the hardened seats past 72 also have the stupid exhaust ports with the injectors and they create a hump in there for the air injectors. Um, the only thing I didn't do in that video for performance that made that truck dominate is I didn't unshroud a little bit. Where that is. That could be slightly chamfered ever so precisely to help flow out that little exhaust valve. Okay. All right. It's a little exhaust valve on such a big motor. So 
We got all these sizes. You pretty much just got everything except the duration of the stock cam. I don't know it up. You look it up. That was the matter. Um, stock Holly four barrels were all 370. So, um, I don't have a screen protector on this new phone and this is, this is getting ridiculous here. Okay. I'm rambling. It's almost 20 minutes. Like, and subscribe, keep it fresh and stay tuned. All right, guys, excuse the hack job of the old outro. Anyway, the engine rebuild video on 345 is going to be the same across all this. Don't worry. I'll make a video of the extra couple steps in detail because those extra steps are really, really detailed and almost unimportant, but... I am also the same type of nut where you hear people regasketing engines and once the engine's out, once the heads are off, you're rebuilding the damn thing. An engine rebuild kit's not even 300 bucks. You're gonna, you're gonna regasket it, but you're not gonna hone it? I'm confused. Anyway, watch the engine rebuild video. I'm probably going, to, I don't know if I could do it to YouTube, I might have to make a whole nother one. It's just, it's one of my better videos with views. But I left a lot in the beginning of the engine rebuild video of scout specific removal. Ignore that if you ain't got a scout, pardon me. If I didn't do that, I could have made it one video instead of two parts. So you're gonna learn a lot. And one thing I'm going to clarify, the only thing I didn't talk about here that I got to clarify that was a little unclear in the other video, the way I worded it, which I still got into a lot of, had to answer so many comments about. These are the newer style, excuse me, composite valves. Ooh, that was weird. All right. And here's your aggressive, all right, diesel style crank that makes this have a diesel power band. We're crazy, right? Point is, I'm, I'm so I'm so tired. Bunch of fun facts like um, <laughs> it's not fumes, trolls. It's um these metal gaskets. They crush down to thirteen thousandths of an inch less than these torched down. Meaning, if you deck the block and heads and or combo, if you deck the heads 20 thousandths of an inch, it is the equivalent, geometry-wise, of decking the heads only 7 thousandths of an inch. They tell you that these hydraulic tappets should be opened up and cleaned and then preloaded with kerosene. Fuck this phone. Pardon your French. <laughs> and that they could handle decking 10 thousands without changing the push rods, meaning by decking it 20 thousands, you've only decked seven thousands so that you're actually three thousandths in the safe range. You've only decked at seven thousandths by decking at 20 without having to shim the rocker towers or get bigger push. Oh, hell, I mean it. The blackberries were neat when I got used to them, but I miss my pager. People want to bother you all the time now when they have an anxiety attack, they want you to have one. I only have this phone for the camera. 
Well, and then so many jobs need you to have an app now. I'm so tired of this. I want my pager back. I'm sorry. No, I can't stop on the way. I didn't have a quarter for the pay phone. I didn't get it. Uh, leave me alone. Figure it out. <laughs> I'm not that smart. I just read the instructions. I Eric Direct, like and subscribe.